When I talk about planting a pollinator garden in these videos, I am usually referring to planting perennial species. That doesn't mean that there aren't great native annuals that can be incorporated into a pollinator garden. In fact, there are many. Two of the most striking, unusual, and easy to grow are the common jewelweed, Impatience capensis, and the pale jewelweed, Impatience pallida. There are several reasons why these awesome annuals would make a great addition to your pollinator garden, the first being the incredibly eye-catching, large, oddly shaped, brightly colored flowers that tend to draw native plant gardeners to jewelweed. Common jewelweed has beautiful trumpet-shaped orange blooms, and pale jewelweed has similarly shaped but slightly larger flowers that are bright yellow. When either species of jewelweed is in full bloom, it is quite a striking plant. The blooms have another thing going for them. They bloom continuously over a very long blooming season. Both common and pale jewelweed will start to bloom around June and will continue to bloom until frost kills the plants in the fall. In some areas of their native range, which we will talk about in a minute. They may be blooming for nearly five months. I am often asked about natives with long bloom periods and jewelweed will deliver. In addition to providing a great floral show over several months, the blooms are quite attractive to many pollinators, especially bumblebees and other long-tongued bees, larger butterflies and moths, some types of flies, and that pollinator garden favorite, the ruby-throated hummingbird, which is often drawn to jewelweed blooms during the fall migration. If you love learning about awesome annual native plants, pretend that like button is a beautiful jewelweed bloom and pollinate that like button. The blooms aren't the only good looking thing about jewelweed. The leaves are also a pleasing shape and shade of green. The deep green, shield shaped, scalloped edged leaves of jewelweed add a lot of visual interest to the plants as they grow and before they start to bloom. Once the blooms start, they really stand out against the pleasing green of the foliage. It is a wonderful combination. The leaves are more than just good looks though, and a species of sawfly and several species of moth caterpillars feed on jewelweed as a host plant. The most interesting of these to me are the caterpillars of the pink-legged tiger moth. Not so much because of the caterpillar's looks, but because of what the adult moths they turn into look like. From above, they look like a cute, snow-white, fuzzy moth, which is cool. But when viewed head on, that cute white moth looks more like something from a death metal album cover. The pink front leg markings for which it is named are often reddish and make it look like the moth has been drinking blood, which it doesn't. Still, it looks super metal and super awesome, which brings up a question. What is your favorite genre of metal music or music in general if you aren't a headbanger? Let me know in the comments. Like many native plants, deer will also browse on jewelweed to some extent, but not usually enough to hurt it. The leaves are also handy if you have some skin irritation, like from poison ivy, stinging nettles, or insect bites. The crushed leaves can be rubbed over the irritated area and will provide some relief, which can be handy when you are out working in the garden or exploring in the woods. Research has also shown the sap has antifungal properties and crushed leaves have been used to treat athlete's foot. Both species of jewelweed found in eastern North America have large native ranges, making one and many times both species options for pollinator gardeners from Canada to the Gulf Coast and the Mississippi River to the East Coast. Common jewelweed has the largest native range and can be found over much of eastern North America. Pale jewelweed also has a large range but is not found in the deep south except in the mountains of North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. Jewelweeds are great for planting in what many consider tough places to grow pollinator gardens, areas that are shady and wet. Common jewelweed does well in dappled to deep shade and thrives in moist to occasionally wet soils and will quickly wilt when growing in a location with too much sun or too dry of soil. Pale jewelweed can take more sun and does well in dappled to partial shade and even full sun and prefers well-drained moist soils that may be occasionally wet. It can take much drier conditions than common jewelweed can, but still requires somewhat moist soil. If you are wondering what dappled, partial, and deep shade mean, I covered all those terms in my video on wild ginger, which I will link in the description. When growing in favorable conditions, the jewelweeds can grow into substantially sized plants. Even though they are annuals, jewelweeds can get big. Common jewelweed can be from three to five feet tall with a one and a half to two and a half foot spread. Pale jewelweed is similar in size, reaching two to five feet tall with a two to three foot spread. 
Growing conditions will have a huge impact on the final size of the plants. And I often see common jewelweed growing on marginal sites that is well under three feet tall. I would like to take a second to thank everybody who has supported the channel by subscribing. I really do appreciate it, and it does let me know that the content I am creating is reaching the audience it is meant for. I would also like to give a super huge thank you to all those who support the channel financially through our Patreon, PayPal Donate, and YouTube Super Thanks. The channel would not be possible without you, and we here at Backyard Ecology are truly thankful for you. If you would like to join them in their support of Backyard Ecology, our Patreon and PayPal Donate are linked in the description, and you can give through YouTube Super Thanks by clicking the heart with the dollar sign icon right below this video. Thanks again for the support. Jewelweed will reseed itself and has no problem sustaining a population if the conditions are favorable to its growth. This can be both a good and a bad thing. Good because jewelweed is an annual and would have to be replanted every year if it didn't reseed so well, and bad because the method of its seed dispersal can allow jewelweed to spread beyond where it was intended to grow. Jewelweed produces a good number of seed and it can disperse this seed quite a distance. They were given the genus name Impatiens and their other common name of Touch Me Not because of the way their fruiting bodies react to being touched. They basically uncoil rapidly and can fling their seeds several feet. Which of course, it is super fun to poke the ripe seed pods when they are on the plant. Just be aware that once you plant jewelweed, it will sustain itself and may spread from its place of planting if conditions are favorable to its growth. In the wild, it isn't uncommon to find nearly solid stands of jewelweed on high disturbance areas with moist soils, like shady floodplains. A huge plus of its ability to self-seed so well and form a thick stand is that it has been shown to outcompete the horribly invasive herbaceous plant, garlic mustard. So it can be used as a native living mulch in shady wet areas to help keep invasive species at bay. The good news for pollinator gardeners is jewelweed won't spread to sunny, drier areas, and if it does pop up somewhere you don't want it, the seedlings are super easy to pull up. Generally, jewelweed doesn't cause a whole lot of problems due to its soil moisture and shade requirements. All those somewhat large seeds do not go unnoticed by the birds and the critters. Many species of ground-feeding songbirds such as sparrows and game birds like the northern bobwhite dine on the seeds. The seeds are also eaten by a wide variety of small mammals, such as field mice. If you love hummingbirds and have a shady wet area in your yard that you haven't been successful at getting a native pollinator garden established in, jewelweed may be just the plant you are looking for. There is a group of perennial natives that are also loved by hummingbirds, bumblebees, and butterflies that also love moist soil and pair well with the jewelweed, the lobelias. And you can learn all about them in this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.